Hey everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to make cold light. I have a fluorescent marker here, and in general they always look a little bit brighter than a regular marker. And the reason is because they are actually a little bit brighter. When something's fluorescent, what happens is it absorbs a photon of light by knocking an electron to a higher energy orbital. And during that time, the electron bumps into other atoms around it, and during that time, it loses a little bit of energy, and then eventually it falls back down to its original orbital. And when it falls back down to a lower energy orbital, then it emits another photon of light. So it took a little bit of time for all that to happen. And the important part is, is because the electron got knocked up to a higher orbital and then it bumped into other atoms and lost some energy and then fell back down, it actually re-emits light that's at a lower energy than the original light that hit it. So what that means is that if you shine ultraviolet light on this marker, it's going to appear as visible light when it comes off of it. So you can see that here. I shine my black light on the marker and visible light comes off of it. So in general, the amount of time that this fluorescent marker holds on to some light and then re-emits it is around a billionth of a second, so a nanosecond. In addition to fluorescence, there's also another thing that can happen called phosphorescence. And phosphorescence is when the atom is able to hold on to that energy for a lot longer and then re-emit a photon of light much later in time. So phosphorescent materials can re-emit that light seconds to minutes to even hours or days later. And for phosphorescence, there's actually two types of phosphorescence as well. There's one that happens a little bit faster, so it only holds on to the light for a little bit of time and then re-emits it. And there's one that holds on to it for a lot longer. The first type of phosphorescence is called triplet phosphorescence. And the second type of phosphorescence is called persistent phosphorescence. So the regular stuff that we call glow in the dark is this persistent phosphorescence, where it's holding these electrons in these holes and eventually some atoms will knock it out of place and release it. So if you were to order these mechanisms by the amount of time that they can hold on to light, it would go fluorescence, then triplet phosphorescence, and then persistent phosphorescence. You'll notice that in all of these mechanisms, in order for the electron to fall back down and re-emit a photon of light, they get knocked around by some atoms first. And the amount of knocking around that happens has to do with the temperature of the atoms in the first place. So what this means is that if we can get something really cold, we should be able to manifest these mechanisms of phosphorescence even when something doesn't have it at regular temperature. So I have a highlighter here and I have a black light. The black light is giving off ultraviolet light with a little bit of visible light. That's why it looks kind of purplish blue. But if I turn off the light and put my highlighter in front of it, you can see how much light the highlighter is giving off. You can see it's giving off this yellow light. The ultraviolet light is rapidly getting converted into visible light, this yellowish green visible light. But the thing with fluorescence is as soon as you turn off the ultraviolet source, it goes away. So you can see it's this bright. As soon as I turn it off, it's gone. So at the most, fluorescence only lasts a microsecond, but usually on the order of nanoseconds. So it's extremely fast. As soon as you turn off your source, it goes dark. So fluorescence doesn't mean glow in the dark. It means it'll glow when you put a black light on it, basically. But now let me take the lid of this. I'll put it in my liquid nitrogen here. Okay, I'm gonna set it there. Now watch what happens when I turn off my black light. Three, two, one. <laughs> you see that? So it's glowing yellow right now, but I turn off the black light and it has this quick flash of bright red. So look how long this is lasting. Here it is at room temperature. Immediately goes black. So now I just have some string here. The string fluoresce is pretty bright as well. Let's put the string in liquid nitrogen. Okay, watch this. glows. Look how long the glow stays. 
and then eventually it fades away. But charge it up again. And it glows like it's a glow in the dark material. So now I have an orange peel. Let's see what this does. Put it in our liquid nitrogen. Turn off the light. Look how it glows. Here's compared to a regular orange peel. So it became more fluorescent the colder it got and also it glows in the dark. It's phosphorescent. Here's a cup. You can see it immediately turns off, but pour some liquid nitrogen in it. Now watch. It glows for a long time. So this is really crazy. Just taking regular objects like oranges, markers, wax, and cooling it down to liquid nitrogen temperatures makes it glow in the dark. So this is just paraffin wax. Look at that. <laughs> the reason this is happening is because at these lower temperatures, there's a lot less collisions of atoms. And so that means that the electrons can stay in their higher energy state for longer. They don't get bumped into as much, and so they're less likely to get knocked down and then re-emit a photon as they fall down. Now from my experiment here, it's hard to tell whether this is triplet phosphorescence or persistent phosphorescence. When I use this bright string here, it seems to last for much longer than several seconds, around 10 seconds. Even when it fades out from view on the camera, I can still see it for at least 10 to 20 seconds afterwards. So this has to be in the range of persistent phosphorescence and not triplet phosphorescence. And I can even do something that I know undergoes triplet phosphorescence, like the phosphor on a compact fluorescent bulb here. And you can see that it lights up for around a second after. Okay, so without cooling it down, here's the broken pieces. Don't see any light. Now I'm gonna cool this one down. And now let's see it. It glows for a little bit. So lower temperatures also helps triplet phosphorescence. So what's really cool about this is cryogenic temperatures can take something that's normally not fluorescent at all, it can turn it fluorescent. It can also take something that's normally not phosphorescent and turn it phosphorescent. From what I found in my experiments, almost anything plastic that I cool down will become glow in the dark at liquid nitrogen temperatures. Even when I put wood in here, it becomes a little bit fluorescent, but not phosphorescent. So this is a really cool phenomenon to try out. I wasn't able to actually find a lot of research on this at all. So there could be a lot to be discovered about when you cool stuff down, why it becomes phosphorescent. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out Action Lab Shorts, which is my second channel that I do similar to this one, but I do my videos in less than a minute. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.